G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome to Man Cave Tuesday. Hope everybody had a fantastic week. Well, actually, it's been two weeks since we've done, done the last Man Cave Tuesday. So what we've got going on in this video is Nay gets a new car. If you're on Facebook, you already know what it is, but we go down to Melbourne and pick it up and you get some footage off out of that. Um, got a funny blooper uh, with Isaac when we did the review of the, um, the Honda CRF 250L. And actually, while we're still out there at the bloody crusty demon pit doing that, I crash the drone and we do a pretty cool recovery. So I've got the footage of that as well. Uh, I've got a new project for the man cave, which, is, which you'll see coming up. I've only just started it. Uh, what else we got? Uh, oh, the Jeep. The bloody UHF radio and the Jeep has an issue and then we find a quite a simple fix for that. So I'll just kind of like show you that stuff. And then we take Max, the DR650, take him out for a ride, see a train tunnel. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, where we go? Head down to Melbourne, let's go. Well, we've been sitting in this bloody Jeep for the last, I don't know, two hours, driving down from Bendigo to Geelong. For those that don't know, Geelong is like the second biggest city outside of Melbourne. Very industrialised type of place. Um, and why have we done that? Well, let's ask Nay. Why are we doing that, Nay? Because I'm getting a new car. Excellent. Very exciting. So she's gone, finally Betty, her car is, uh, We've spent enough bloody money just fixing it up every every so often, so she's got herself a new Ford Escape. What uh, year is it? It's an 01, so it's old, but it's new for me. That's it. We like old. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you when we get to the car yard. You can check it out and see what colour it is. <laughs> oh, it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> for me it is. So, turn is around. And some back streets. <laughs> Make Red. it sound like a dodgy deal. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. It's this one here, the black one. Oh, they took it all off. Yeah. The whole lot. Ah, yeah. oh, but it's got a badge back. Oh, it was missing a badge, so they put that back on for us. There you go, that's a nice new car. It's not perfect, got a couple of little uh, dints it's and bobs, me. but yeah. All right, let's go do the uh, the business. All right, guys, it starts. Good start to it. That's I don't need that. now, this is a column auto, which is old school to me. <laughs> the only bugger now is we've got to drive in separate cars to uh, get back home. Well, thinking about grabbing a train, but oh, to get to Geelong, it's like two hours down to Melbourne, and then it's, I don't know, another hour, and it's just a lot of mucking around. So, we're going to drive down this little alleyway <laughs> until we get to the Jeep right here. There we go. Beautiful. So, of course, we don't know what you're going to say because you're going to have the camera in the car on the way home. No, so, there you go. We'll report back when we get back to Benigo. Cool, see you guys. <laughs> That's gonna take a bit of getting used to. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, we'll give the guys a bit of a look inside. There we go. Plenty of room for all the wood in the back. So how'd you go driving in that? Yeah, good, good. Yeah. It'll take a bit of getting used to. Yeah. It's um I like it though. Cool. <laughs> All right, now we're going to McDonald's. Rightio, guys, so now we're going to check out the blooper and that uh, drone crash. <coughs> Rightio, I'm recording, aren't I? Just make sure. Yes, you are. G'day, guys, how's it going? All right, we're doing a review on the Honda CRF 250L. Isaac. G'day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we've got a crashed drone. There he is. Bloody hell. Now we've got to get it down, somehow. <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> Fantastic! Oh, 
fantastic. There you go, guys. That's how you do a drone retrieval at the Krusty Demon Pit. Thanks, Isaac. Bloody fantastic, mate. <laughs> oh my God, bloody hell, guys! That was such an awesome catch by Isaac. I mean, that could have that could have cost me eight hundred dollars if he hadn't have bloody caught that. And as you saw, it was going out one way, and then it bloody whoa! <laughs> cool. All right, let's get out and uh, check out the Jeep. All right, guys. So we're in Brutus the Jeep. And you might have remembered me showing you this little uh, shelf thing that I built on here and I was sticking this stuff down. What I realised was that this little um, GME, I'll, I'll bring you over. Yeah, so this little um, UHF radio duvalacky thing, the speaker's not working. That's what I figured out. When I do all the buttons and stuff, normally it makes an audible beep. And I've grabbed out this. And if I try and, we're on channel 26. Breaker, breaker, anybody got their ears on? Nothing, I'm not hearing anything. So I'm thinking to myself, oh no, what are we gonna do? I've gotta try and get bloody on, on warranty or I've gotta buy a new one. I don't use it very often. Um, so the thought of going out and buying a new one for something that I don't you know, use very often, I thought, oh bloody hell, and then, I figured out that you can buy an external um, speaker for it. So that's what I've got. It was like $30. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out. There's a little slot in here. Put that in there. Can you see that? So now, hopefully, <laughs> it works! So that's a $30 fix. Back on the 26 and now, if I go, breaker, breaker, anybody got their ears on? <laughs> that ship, that's working. That is a win. All right, so now all I've got to do is figure out where I'm going to uh, mount this and now I'll be able to, I'll be able to permanently fix all this stuff up. Cool. Just thought I'd show you that. Rightio, guys. I wanted. Uh, I thought I'd better show you what I ended up doing. So I've now got this um, mounted, so I can push on that, and that doesn't move. Now, what I've done, if you can see in there, I've basically used that dual lock um, Velcro stuff, and it's stuck to the underneath of that. But that's made that nice and solid in there now. I don't have to worry about pushing and pushing it down the back. Um, that's always been there. That's actually that's actually screwed. I don't like screwing into stuff, but sometimes you just got to do it. Uh, I've zip tied all these cables that run down, and then that is where the speaker is, just down there, and that is um, dual lock stuck on there. So that won't go anywhere with that dual lock stuff, and that's nice and close to me so that I can actually hear the speaker. Sometimes if you put a speaker down low or something like that, it's very hard to hear it, especially when you're in a car and it's going along. So having the speaker close by um, is pretty good. So I showed you guys in another video how I had um, a problem with uh, this matting being stuck down to that. What I actually used was this um, Sally's Quick Grip, but it ended up lifting up. Now, obviously, that was due to the heat that uh, gets on there. So what I've what I've used is this stuff on there, and so far it's working. But it's winter; we're not getting the heat on there, so I don't know whether that's going to hold up. I've also now just uh, done the back. I've got all the bottles holding that down, so uh, that mat there was all lifting up. So I've put that glue on there and hopefully that will work on there. But in that last video, someone mentioned to me that um, silicon glue, so this is a pro tip. Um, I haven't personally done this myself, but this sounds obviously smart. Uh, silicon glue is what you want to use um, where there's uh, quite a lot of heat. Uh, and I don't know whether it's heat fluctuations. I think it, the, the thing that it is that it doesn't, uh, doesn't go brittle. 
so it will hold better in heat. So next time, if this doesn't work, I'll be looking for the silicon glue to, uh, to do that. Cool, all right, let's get back to the man cave. Rightio guys, now we're heading out into the workshop to check out this new little bloody project I'm doing. Rightio guys, I thought I'd better make a start on this little project. So this is my old air compressor that no longer works. It's been sitting around the back for ages. So what I'm gonna do is strip it all down and use this tank, the air tank here. I don't know what size it is, um, but basically what I wanna do is make a wood stove um, or a pot belly that I can actually use in a confined area so that I'm not gonna get smoke coming out of it, that it's all gonna flue straight out. Cool, so let's get into ripping it down. Right, right, first thing I better do is check to make sure there's no uh, pressure in it. So that's empty. Well, there you go guys, so that is um, everything that I could unscrew um, and taken off of that air compressor. So the idea with this is to have that sit, um, I mean I've got two ways to do it. I could run it that way and have a flue up here and the opening part out here, which would allow me to have more firewood in there. Um, but I think, because I'm, I, I'm not 100% sure on how to do all this, so I want to do it what I think is going to be the best way to make sure that the, uh, the whole flu thing um, and all the smoke's going to come out. So my head says straight up and down like that. So what I reckon I'm going to have to do is obviously cut a hole in here and have a flu that goes straight up. Uh, I believe I'm going to I'm going to put in a tray down the bottom, which means I'll be able to clean all the ash out. It'll also act as a um, an air tamper, damp, an air damper, and then I'll have a, obviously a hole up here, which will be a door, and that will seal closed. Inside there, I'll have a grate of some description that goes in there, and I think that should be it. So there might be a few little bits and obviously I've got to grind all this stuff off, the handle, all these bits and pieces. I'll put legs on it so that it can, uh, you know, it'll sit up like that. So there you go, guys. That's all I'm gonna uh, do of this in this man cave Tuesday. Uh, the next one will come out and I'll uh, continue on my process of doing this. I will at the end of, if this all works out, I will actually run, uh, put all these and just have one video doing this from start to finish. Back to the man cave. All right guys, now we're jumping on Max and we're getting out of here. All right guys, I've just come off the highway. I've noticed this place has been a bit, has been, the gate's been locked up for quite a while. It's been quite a few years actually since I've been on this track. I can't remember what the hell I was on when I came in, up this track. So I thought I'd come and check it out. I know it's some place, ah oh, yeah. It switches around. So they've now got tower track. They've now got these uh, posts up. So pylon track that way. 
I don't think there was two tracks. I think there was only one. Oh, I'm a little excited. All right, Let's see what this tower track is. So I know at some stage it gets me to go over one of the big tunnels for where the train goes through. Oh, there's a track up there. I think somewhere over there is where the uh, the train goes through, like it's cut way down. have a bit of a mosey on the oh, it's a bit chilly oh yeah another track there a bit chilly this morning but it's uh, really nice like the sun's shining blue skies and I tell you what I was really struggling this today I just had no motivation to do anything I helped out now with all the orders because Monday's the biggest day but I just yeah I was really I had to really push myself to get on the bloody bike. Once I get on it, I'm like, yeah, this is... <laughs> what the hell was I bloody crapping on about? Yeah, so this is a lot more graded from what I remember. Is that... No, that's not the train. Oh, hang on. Ah, down there. All right, hang on. I'll go up here and turn back around. Oh, they've done heaps of uh, oh that's the oh right that's the tower it's just a bloody aerial most probably should watch where I'm going oh, <laughs> we'll go back to that train let's see what's up here hey <laughs> Oh, you can just see the train line over there. Oh, cool. All right, I got to hang on a minute. All right, guys. Wow. This is a... Uh, I haven't been up here. These roads weren't in the last time I was up. So you can most probably hear it. That There's a highway that goes along there. That's the highway that goes um, out to uh, Melbourne. It's the colder, colder highway. Now, if we come down here a bit, we should be able to see the train line. I'll zoom in and stop walking. So that's the train line there that goes to Melbourne as well. And it obviously comes under this hill. And then when we go back down, I'll show you where it comes out on the other side over there. But Jesus, that's a bit of a uh, bit of a track here. And I reckon, oh, that's a bit of a sketchy one. Jesus, what the hell do they have come up this bloody track? I don't know if you guys can see that on the on the uh, on the camera. That's a bit of a oh, geez, getting a bit steep now. Yeah, well, that might be one for the bloody DR to have a go at. Not today, though. <laughs> All right, back up the bloody hill. Oh, look at that. There's Max. Yeah, so this area that I'm in, it's, this is a uh, big hill. Um, basically, whenever we come back, coming back from Melbourne um, on the, in the car, once we go over big hill, we always give the car a bit of a pat to say, beauty, you made it. Because <laughs> basically after build, big hill, you just roll into Bendigo. So, yeah, you get some pretty, nearly a 360 degree bloody um, view. All the way, I won't spin you around and bullshit the shit out of you. I can see, I reckon that Spring Gully res. Oh, yeah. All right, back on the bike. I was just looking, guys. I don't know if this uh, little camera will pick it up, but uh, those wires from there, and the way they go down, and it goes down and up like that, I tell you what, that'd be a bloody ripper flying fox ride. It uh, might be a bit of a shocking ride. All right. Get on, Max. <sighs> down this hill. So yeah, I'm gonna to have to come back and check out all these uh, all these tracks. 
Seems to be a whole heap around here now. So we'll double back and uh, see if we can uh, have a look at this tunnel system. Which means I'm going to have to do a little bit of walking maybe. Oh no. No, you can go down here. about there so all right use this camera instead of those other ones so basically that's that tunnel system down there I'm gonna see if I can get down to it somehow of course without uh, without falling in there oh. Wow. oh there you go Train lines. so I don't know whether I can maybe make my way down there. Oh, let's see how I go. Oh, Jesus, all right, guys, I think so far so good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> all right. What do we got? Jeez, he's a long way down. So I wonder, I don't think I, can, I can't get down this side. I, don't, I can't tell how steep that is, I have to go over there. Rightio guys, I'm not going to make it down this side, it's too bloody steep being in, you know, I've got uh, motorbike boots on. Now that's the tunnel there, but I reckon if I rode the bike, which is way up there, down, because it, it goes down and then I could actually walk back up here. Possibly, maybe, perhaps. Because I don't like heights. And in these boots, it's a, just a little bit tricky. And that's what it's like down there. Cool. All right, guys, trying to get back up out of this frigging thing. Oh! Holy hell, I should have went the same way I came. I don't know, somehow I went a different way. Oh, bloody hell, should I get myself into? All right, where the hell is Max? There he is. Up over there somewhere. All right, guys. So, back on Max. Let's see where this track takes us. And if it's not too far to get down to where I can actually get into that railway, I'll walk back to that, uh, that tunnel. I won't go in the tunnel. I'll just give you the heads up now because I don't know the timetable of the trains and we get quite frequent trains now coming through on this train line um, and you get moderate speed trains and then we also have the really the fast bloody trains and uh, they can get bloody hooking sometimes well I reckon about here somewhere right here guys so I've pulled up just in case a car happens to come to or four wheel drive uh, Max is out of the way. I have to take my gear off. I tell you what, it was actually, you know, it was quite chilly this morning. It actually got chillier the further on the morning went. Um, but it doesn't take much. As soon as you get into a little bit of off-road stuff, very quick. I mean, obviously, I've still got all my winter gear in uh, in my stuff. Oh, geez, where am I going to go? I've got to go through here. Ah, oh, so they've got a little bit of a race. All right, let's uh, let's jump this. <laughs> All right, there's a train track, and I like that height, but, oh, Jesus Christ almighty, I could get down that, but would I get back up? Oh, come on, there's got to be a way. Someone's obviously done it at some stage. This will be where the kangaroos get up. Oh. Beautiful, look at that. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh, and there's a the tunnel there. That's an easy walk. Oh, bloody ripper. What a great day to be alive. All right, I'll see you when we uh, get up closer to that uh, tunnel. 
Well, I'm walking up to this bloody tunnel. I don't know if you guys can see that in the thing, but I can actually see through it. I was expecting not to be able to see the end. So, well, that's really deceptive, uh, looking at it from the top, or where it came out. Well, there you go, guys. So that's, uh, that's the tunnel. I've never been down here. I was trying to guesstimate how long that would be. <laughs> and hello, there's a big sign. It says 390 metres. So not a very long tunnel. About longer than your average. Yeah, I expected not to be as much room. I reckon you... Wow. Oh my God, the echo. Shit, that's crazy. It's like... Hello. Hope you can pick that up on... That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, I, I think you'd be quite sweet to be in here if, if a train comes through. So we've only got... I've just got to keep an eye. I should be able to hear it. So it's only one single line. But there's... Um, yeah, plenty of uh, room on the sides. That's a really... It's quite a bloody big tunnel. Massive. See up there, they've got an um, antenna that pokes in. So obviously they can get signal while they're actually in this tunnel. Freaking me out, this echo. Right, let's try, let's try the coo wee. Coo oh, that's me phone. <laughs> Hello, Mark speaking. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Jeez, business never bloody stops. That was actually Steve Kramer Products. Um, you know, that does in Melbourne, they do all the um, the DRC, it's where I get the DRC products. Um, and the, what's the oil stuff? Why is it gone? Maxima! The Maxima oils. Uh, so yeah, now you'd obviously placed an order and we hadn't changed stuff over, so yeah, anyway. There you go, mucking around with motorbikes and I'm bloody doing business motorbikes. <laughs> All right, see you back at the bike. All right, guys, so... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is not go back out the way I came. I'm going to follow these uh, tracks because they should follow the train line which is basically going to take me straight back home but I just know they used to have these closed off so that you couldn't get through so I might end up I don't know, I might have to get to a, I'll end up at a closed gate where I can't get out up this other end and I'll have to come all the way back and that's not a bad thing obviously I'll just get to have a bit of a longer ride Yeah, the day's, the day's looking really good. Alright guys, so I won't bore you with me bloody just zipping around here. Hey! I'll, uh, oh Jesus, okay, hang on. Oh, tracks everywhere. Where's that going? Oh, that's a bit of a hole. Oh, uh. See what's up here first. So, oh, there's a train line up there. Oh, so I've got to be going the right way. Oh, and this is the race. Oh, oh shit, shit. Whoa, that was a bit deep. The thing with puddles, you don't know how deep they are. All right, all right, guys, back to the bloody man cave. All right, guys, so I just thought of put the cameras going I'm bloody getting through all this quagmire stuff so far I've been able to get around most of it but oh go oh bloody hell made it Woo. oh yeah most of the tracks have uh, gone around all those quagmire bits but that one there was lots of ways around but they were all pretty much uh, had water to get through. Oh. So there's been a couple of fences and all the gates have been um, open. So that's really good. And I think from here, I think I know where I am now. That last gate I come through, oh, where are we? Um, was the one that they closed. So it'd be good if they keep them open now because 
Oh, here we go again. All right, go to the outside. Should be nice and slippy. Just take it easy. Excellent. Around here. Look at this suburbia just creeping out now. It's nuts. Whoa, it's way, hey, hey. Um, but it's nuts how, uh, how us humans just spread. Like all those houses, there, this used to be just all bush. Alright, that's progress for you, I suppose. If you don't like it, move out further. Move out into the bush. Alright, now we're really going back because I know where we are. Yeah, this is that little canyon section. Oh, hang on with me, guys. Hang on with me, guys. We'll get through the canyon. Looks like it's bloody, it's lovely and dry. Oh, get into sec. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch out, Mark. Silly bastard. Go. Oh. All right, back to the bloody man cave now, guys. Well, there you go, guys. That's another Man Cave Tuesday done and dusted. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great week. And remember, keep on riding. And if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.